Good morning, space flight enthusiasts, and welcome to another Angry Bulletin. Finally getting back to space flight and wandering away from 3i Atlas, which may come as a delight to at least some of you, but it's important that we talk about some of the real-life practical benefits that space flight brings to each and every one of us, unless you are a tribesman somewhere who makes absolutely no use of modern day transportation or the internet or anything along those lines, space flight will definitely benefit you and it benefits you every single day, whether you realize it or not. And just recently, an Ariane 6 rocket, yes, one of those overpriced expendable rockets that we love to hate so much, an Ariane 6 rocket deployed several satellites that are part of what is called the Galileo constellation. The Galileo constellation is Europe's big contribution to the GPS or sat nav network, whatever you want to call it. Our ability to navigate the planet only using something like this. Now, Galileo is a substantial upgrade from previous GPS systems. It offers a lot of additional benefits and a lot of precision that our current GPS network doesn't have. And in addition to that, it's extremely important that we have as many countries and as many representing companies contributing to the GPS network as possible for reasons that we're going to explore here here in just a moment. Okay, so number one, I'm sure a lot of you are thinking right now, well, you know, I'm an American or I'm a Canadian or I'm in Japan, something along those lines. And so this is a European GPS constellation. It doesn't benefit me directly at all. Well, let's find out if your cell phone is actually picking up signals from the Galileo constellation. And if not, what satellites are providing you with the GPS service that you so desperately need? And we're going to go ahead and pick up our cell phones and I'm going to show you how to do this. Okay, so step number one, you need to find a spot that has an open patch of sky. Otherwise, your phone isn't going to be picking up any GPS satellites. And fortunately, well, it's a bit cloudy here in Canary Wharf, but we can at least see the open sky. So let's go ahead and look at what we need in order to see the satellites that are supporting me right now. Okay, so like most people, I just Googled how I was going to be able to do this. And there's an app called GPS Test. It allows me to see what GPS satellites happen to be servicing my phone at any given moment. It's free. It's not a very big app and pretty easy to download. And then once you open it up, bang, there's all of the satellites that are currently serving my phone. So many of them. And as you can see, they vary from nation to nation, circles representing the United States and squares representing the Russian Glasnost system. And you also have triangles, the Galileo system. And as you can see, there are several of them that are supporting my phone at this location. Even China and Japan are represented on this map. Look at all of the satellites that are supporting my phone and supporting my ability to navigate accurately and correctly throughout the city of London, where I currently am, or any place I'd like to go on the planet. There are even Indian satellites on this map and quite a number of satellites that also provide augmentation to the navigation system. So there are many nations that contribute to all of this, but what specific contribution is Galileo making? 
Now, being an American, you hear me use the word GPS or the term GPS quite a lot, but that actually only refers specifically to American sat-nav systems. Only American satellites are called Global Positioning System Satellites. So, what does Galileo do that's different? Well, as I said before, it is not an American system, nor is it a Russian system, the GLONASS system, which are not only competing, but also run by the military this is actually a civilian run satellite system that is not subject to the whims of military shutdowns in the event of a war in theory galileo will continue to work for everybody regardless of what might be happening in the political spectrum this was as you can probably guess created by the european union through the european space agency and it is headquartered in prague in Czech and it has two ground operations centers, one of which is in Oberpfaffenhofen, Germany, and in Fucino, Italy. This is a 10 billion euro project providing Europe with its own independent navigation system. Once again, this benefits a lot of people besides Europe because if anything happens to the GPS and GLONASS system in God forbid the situation of Russia and the United States going to war, the Galileo system would still operate for just about everybody on the planet. Its 26 satellites are sufficient to provide global coverage. They don't just provide coverage for people in Europe. In addition to that, the Galileo satellites provide four times the accuracy of the American GPS system. This is simply because they're more up to date, more modern technology a lot of the american gps satellites have been up there for a very long period of time so there's a lot more accuracy and precision available through the galileo system in addition galileo services are free and open to everyone Another reason that Europe wanted their own system is because the American GPS system originally had something called selective availability, which offered one level of service to civilians and another level of service to the US military. And civilian applications were actually a lot less accurate because of this selective availability. However, on May the 2nd, 2000, Bill Clinton signed an order which removed selective availability availability and it has never been put back into place but theoretically it could and in addition on the 19th of september 2007 the u.s department of defense announced that their newer gps satellites would not be capable of implementing selective availability so that's a very good thing and definitely something that europe sure and the rest of the world appreciates but europe would prefer to have a civilian controlled system that can't be shut down or at least can't be shut down without the cooperation of quite a number of nations and not just one commander-in-chief of one military organization. Again, I'm not America bashing here. I think it makes a lot of sense to do things this way with GPS, but it's kind of nice to know that there are other services available in case anything becomes hostile in regards to the American GPS and especially the Russian GLONASS system. Now, one of the reasons that Galileo satellites are more accurate is because of a matter of timing. They have two master passive hydrogen maser atomic clocks and two secondary rubidium atomic clocks which are independent of one another and they take timing measurements against one another to make sure that all of this is extremely precise and stable as a matter of fact there are no timing systems that are more accurate than this in operation anywhere on the planet however on the planet, it's a little bit different. Millisecond pulsars are actually more accurate than even these atomic clocks. And every now and then, scientists make minor adjustments to atomic clocks using millisecond pulsars as their base timing system to get better accuracy. It's amazing that nature provides a more accurate system than our technology can. Assuming, of course, that millisecond pulsars are the product of nature, but I'm not going to get into that right now. That'll be a different video. 
So why was Ariane 6 used? Well, because it was a European rocket. Falcon 9 could definitely do the job for less money, although not easily. Falcon 9 did indeed deploy four Galileo satellites in 2024, but two of those satellites required that Falcon 9 expend its first stage. There was no reusability involved with that first launch, but then they fine-tuned some things and managed to get a little bit more performance out of Falcon 9's booster, which allowed them to recover the first stage on the second attempt. All that being said, though, it is a difficult thing to do for a reusable rocket because you're delivering the payload to a much higher orbit. Each Galileo satellite weighs about 730 kilograms, so a pair of them weighs over one and a half tons, and you have to inject them into a precise MEO orbit or medium Earth orbit altitude. That's 23,222 kilometers as opposed to a few hundred kilometers for low Earth orbit. This, of course, requires a heavy lift rocket with a powerful upper stage capable of multiple burns and long coast phases for accurate orbital insertion. Ariane 6 is one of the few rockets that has this, but Falcon 9 can do it, at least theoretically reusing the first stage, but they didn't actually do that on the first attempt. They had to expend the entire rocket to deliver the payload to this ambitious orbit. Second time, though, to be fair, they did pull it off. All that being said, though, it is not an easy thing to do to deploy satellites to this type of orbit, especially heavy satellites, so Ariane 6 is a pretty good choice, but as I suggested, you could probably do it cheaper with SpaceX. All right, so I'm sure there's plenty of you who are still saying, well, I never travel or I only travel within my own neighborhood. I'm an old fashioned guy who knows exactly where everything is because I use maps or I just travel to other places that I'm familiar with. I'm never really going to make use of a GPS network. So how does it benefit me? Well, Interestingly enough, GPS has a bigger impact on our daily lives. If we are talking about the amount of carbon, the amount of harmful pollution that we are putting into our atmosphere, our GPS network has a bigger positive impact than any green energy solution that we've come up with. The use of sat-nav or GPS technology significantly reduces carbon emissions by optimizing efficiency across numerous industries, primarily transportation, agriculture, and construction. While a single global number is hard to pin down due to the variety of applications and measurement methods, estimates indicate that the savings are in the millions of tons of CO2 annually across various sectors. For example, on transportation transportation and logistics. GPS enables route optimization, reduces idling time, and encourages efficient driving habits which lowers fuel consumption and emissions. Google estimates that its eco-friendly routing feature alone saves over a million tons of carbon emissions per year. A single telematics provider reported saving 1.25 million tons of carbon emissions annually for its clients worldwide just one company. The FAA states that modernizing air traffic control with GPS has already resulted in $1.2 billion in fuel savings and reduced exhaust emissions from optimized flight paths. Now, as far as agriculture is concerned, precision agriculture utilizes GPS for the precise application of seeds, water, fertilizers, and pesticides, leading to less waste and more efficient fuel use with farm equipment. For example, John Deere and Company estimates that a single farmer with 6,500 acres using these techniques could avoid using over 400,000 kilograms, 400 metric tons of CO2, one farmer per production cycle. And then for construction, high precision GPS and machinery like bulldozers and excavators reduces waste and lowers fuel consumption by ensuring tasks are completed more efficiently. 
One estimate suggests machine-controlled technologies can cut over 1 billion pounds of CO2 usage per year. And then municipal services. Cities use GPS for tracking and optimizing routes for garbage trucks, snow plows, and buses, resulting in significant fuel and salt savings during the winter time. And then beyond GPS for navigation and tracking, the broader use of satellite technology, including Earth observation for monitoring emissions, could lead to even more substantial global carbon reductions. One report suggests that the full adoption of existing satellite technology could help reduce global greenhouse gas emissions by 9%. Billions and billions of tons of CO2 kept out of the atmosphere without having to build one windmill, without building one solar farm, without forcing one driver to convert to electric cars, without any of that. GPS has reduced pollution by a tremendous amount. And as we become more and more precise in our application of this technology, the savings is going to get even bigger. So there you have it, the Ariane 6 rocket. It benefits all of us every single day because of its capability to deliver these kinds of big, heavy satellites into medium Earth orbit, which only medium to heavy lift rockets are really capable of doing. And GPS benefits all of us a lot more than anybody really tells us. It's strange that none of the big advocates for space flight, the big advocates for space technology and the benefits that it brings to humanity, almost nobody really talks about this. Just how big of an impact spaceflight has on each and every one of us. I think if this sort of thing were properly communicated by NASA and by the big spaceflight industries of the planet, people might understand a bit more as to why we invest billions of taxpayer dollars in new spaceflight technology. The better access that we have to medium Earth orbit, and other orbits for that matter, the less expensively we can deliver payloads there, and the more payloads we can deliver to these types of orbits, the better these services are going to become. And if we don't invest in these things, if we continue to rely on GPS satellites that have been up there forever, aging GPS satellites that are vulnerable to space garbage, to micrometeoroids, to solar storms, eventually that GPS network is going to come down. Our ability to navigate that we've relied upon for so many years will cease to exist. And I can't imagine the kind of impact that would have on our modern day civilization if we lost those conveniences. So when you're in a mood to criticize space flight or the amount of money that's spent on it or the kind of money that people who run space flight companies tend to pay themselves, although it's perfectly fine to criticize Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos. Nobody should be earning hundreds of billions of dollars for this. But nevertheless, if you're ever in a mood to do that, think about the kind of impact, the positive impact, the vital impact that spaceflight has on your life each and every day. Thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And also please consider supporting this channel on Patreon. This is how I can bring you some unique content regarding space flight, UFOs, aliens, whatever you're interested in from around the world. And until next time, stay angry about space.